Hello and welcome to Easter Egg Hunting, a show that dissects your favourite games looking for hidden secrets and easter eggs. We're going to try our hardest to show you all and any easter eggs that we can find in any game, and we'll even be throwing in a bit of trivia as well. We've now reached part 4 on our journey through the original Metal Gear Solid and we're getting even closer to the end, so let's not dawdle. After your first lovely torture session with Ocelot, you'll get a chance to run around your cell. If we head up to the walls and knock on them, or if we just randomly hit circle to perform combos in the air, Johnny Sasaki, the guard watching you, will ask you politely to be quiet. Shut up! Shut up in there, will ya? Well, kind of. Hiding under the bed makes him also say this. What the hell are you doing? And then you can also have a go at calling Naomi whilst in the cell. If we do it at the right moment, we can get her to, yet again, break the fourth wall for us. She does this by telling you that she can heal your arm from the torture pains by telling you to place the controller on it and then let the vibrations soothe you back to health. How does that feel, Snake? A little better? How did you do that? And now we can get up to all sorts of mischief as we can escape this cell in multiple ways. The first way is as follows. Wait for Johnny to head off to the bathroom or fall asleep. Whilst he isn't looking, hide under the bed. When he returns and notices that you're not there, he'll open the cell up and look for you and he's all confused and lost and it's quite cute. And then you can just sneak attack him and run away. The second way is to wait for Otacon or give him a call whilst in the cell and then a few moments later he'll arrive to help you with some ketchup. <laughs> Thanks, mate. All you need to do here is, again, wait for the opportune moment to be alone, then lie on the ground, equip the ketchup, use it, and then when Johnny returns, he'll think that you've committed suicide. He'll open the cell, check on you, and then you sneak attack him and run off again. The third way, however, involves waiting for Otacon again. By the way, in the torture, you can submit or resist either way to let any of these work, so don't worry. Just make sure that when you get the ketchup, use it like usual, but whilst Johnny is around to see you waste it. What are you playing around with that ketchup for? After that, he'll go into the bathroom again, and whilst he's gone, you'll then be rescued by the ninja who will slash the lock in the original and slice the door in half in the Twin Snakes. Also, if we escape the cell without killing or knocking out Johnny, he will end up chasing us. Once you get to the torture room, however, this will trigger a moment when Johnny has yet another bout of diarrhea and then rushes to the toilet. If you then follow him and knock on the door that he's in, he'll groan in pain. sickening. And just for another little thing, during the torture, if you take the lesser route and submit to it, you'll find that you'll actually catch Johnny's cold once you escape, leading to many humorous codec calls and recommendations on cold medicine. Trust me, it's all worth it to hear a bunged up snake. Now, to carry on the hero's way, if we choose not to submit to the torture, Ocelot will plant a bomb in Snake's gear as escapism insurance, I guess. If we wait a while before throwing away Ocelot's time bomb that he rigged to our gear, Deep Throat will call Snake about 15 seconds before the bomb goes off. Whereas in the twin snakes, it happens a little bit sooner than that. Snake, there's a bomb planted in your items. Hurry, throw it away! If we continue to wait, however, Campbell will then end up calling you and tell you exactly how to throw the thing away before it goes boom. Select the bomb in the equipment window and press the circle button to throw it away. Around this part of the game as well, give Master Miller a call whilst running around on a noisy surface. He'll then give you this little bit of advice. There's a way to walk so your footsteps won't be heard. I call it stalking. Put your weight on the opposite foot that you're going to step with. Then, take a step so that your heel makes contact with the ground first. As you slowly lower the tip of your foot to the floor, gradually shift your weight onto that foot. Snake then replies that he's frustrated and can't do it, to which Miller replies, Another way is to wear your socks over your shoes. In the Twin Snakes, however, this line ends up actually being changed. In practical terms, you should be moving the control stick very gently. Like many other moments of this game, another throwback to Metal Gear 2 is visible after this section with the spiral staircase chase scene, where a near identical event occurs. After all that madness, things get even more mad when we have to fight a Hind D gunship of all things. Just before this battle though, when you first see the gunship itself, try calling Miller, and then you'll see that we get no response from him. This is actually a strong foreshadowing to Miller's true identity, as some of you already know. Then we can get to the actual battle, where another fourth wall codec moment could be performed here by calling Campbell, who will tell you, to help you out with locating the gunship, to listen out for the rotor blades of it with your stereo TV. However, setting the game sound to mono, or playing on a mono TV, provokes the following call of disbelief. Huh? Snake, you're not using a stereo TV? It can't be! A mono TV? Hmm. <clears throat> Well, Colonel, there's nothing we can do about it. Although, after that little bit of degrading, Campbell will still reassure you that you can beat the Hind D without the use of a stereo television anyway. There's more to being a good person than just having a stereo television. Brilliant. Later onwards, we then become part of this nightmarish elevator ambush with stealth camouflaged assassins. This is, again, another throwback to Metal Gear 2, where nearly the exact same thing happens. 
In the game, these attackers were known as the Four Horsemen, but were nicknamed Ultravox, which was weirdly enough actually a tribute to the 70s British band Ultravox. After all that insanity, we have another battle with Sniper Wolf in a snowfield. When she hijacks your codec, she mentions a love letter being a bullet from her gun. Well, I'm going to send you a love letter, my dear. Do you know what that is? It's a bullet straight from my gun to your heart. Which Dennis Hopper's character in Blue Velvet, Frank Booth, also mentions. I'll send you a love letter. Straight from my heart, fucker! You know what a love letter is? It's a bullet from my fucking gun! After another long cutscene, and after the epic battle itself, you can have a little nose around and you may notice that you can see a parachute caught tangled in a tree. This is actually the same parachute that Liquid used to escape the crashed Hind D that you just blew up. If you then end up looking directly at it, you'll trigger another call with Campbell. I found a parachute near the wreckage of the Hind. A parachute? You don't think that Liquid survived? Just for the giggles as well, repeatedly call Master Miller again around this point and see what he has to say. As well as a small squabble about hats and bandanas. Over 70% of your body's warmth is lost through your head. Put on some kind of hat. I hate hats. Is a bandana okay? Well, I guess it's better than nothing. He'll talk about the causes of pneumonia and when exactly is the ideal time that you shouldn't be playing video games. In an arctic environment, it's important to change your underwear if you're sweating a lot. You could even catch pneumonia. Gaming after a bath should be avoided. Once you're done here, you'll need to carry on onwards to where Metal Gear Rex is being held. To do this though, you need to insert disc 2. Do as prompted and then carry on like normal. However, if you go back to the snowfield on disc 2, you'll then notice that Sniper Wolf's dead body has now been replaced with an excited wolf puppy. Now that's just adorable. Thanks for watching and let us know if we've missed any easter eggs. Keep in mind that we're finding these eggs in order of appearance in the game and there's plenty more stuff to come. If you want to see more of my stupid stuff and you want to hear me talk very very quickly then have a look at my last very very quick current quickie video game quick quick video. You can also check out more videos to the side and don't forget to check out vgfacts.com. Thank you again and take care.